How a company accounts for an investment will differ significantly based on whether the company uses the fair value method or the equity method to account for that investment. Now, the fair value method is generally used when the company owns less than 20% of the company in which it's invested. If the company owns 20 to 50% of the company in which it's invested, it's generally presumed to have significant influence over the investee. Okay, so then in that case, you would use the equity method. Now, the accounting matters because under the fair value method, okay, if you own less than 20% of the company you're invested in, then the investor's income is going to be affected by any unrealized gains or losses, of the stock and the investee. So if the stock price of the company they're invested in goes up and they haven't sold the stock, they're going to have an unrealized gain. If the stock were to go down, they'd have an unrealized loss. Also, if the investor receives dividends from the investee, then they're going to recognize dividend revenue. So unrealized gains and losses and dividends received will uh, affect the investor's net income. Now, with the equity method, neither of those two things matter. Okay, Unrealized gains are not going to affect the investor's income under the equity method, and dividends received are not going to be income under the equity method. So then what would affect the investor's income? The investor will take a proportionate share of the investee's net income or net loss, and they will recognize, so let's say that the investee had $100,000 in net income and they own 30%. Okay, they would take 30% of that 100000 of net income, and they would recognize that as investment revenue. Okay, so they'll basically recognize either investment revenue or a loss on the investment based on their proportionate share of ownership in the investee. Now, under either of these methods, equity method or fair value method, if the company actually sells the investment and has a realized gain or loss, that would affect uh, the, the income of the investor. And also, in either of these cases, an asset could be impaired. You'd have an asset impairment, and that would affect, that would decrease the, the profit of the investor. I'm just focusing on the differences here, okay? And I'm going to show you some examples of how the equity method and fair value method would result in different outcomes for the investor uh, in, in terms of their, their effect on their P&L. So let's say Berkshire Hathaway owns 5% of a company called Chocolate Ham. Okay, Berkshire acquired the stock on January 1st, 2020 for $400,000. Okay, and then they received a dividend of $10,000 uh, on June 30th of 2020. Okay, so they made the investment. Uh, six months later, they got a dividend. And then they report n that company in which they had invested, okay, the investee, Chocolate Ham, they report net income of $100,000 uh, for the year ended December 31st, 2020. And then the fair value of Berkshire's investment in Chocolate Ham on December 31st, 2020 is $600,000. So I'm going to show you how to break all this apart and to figure out how is Berkshire Hathaway's uh, profit going to be affected by all these things going on with, with Chocolate Ham. So let's take a look. So in terms of, so first of all, we have to say, okay, which method are we going to apply? The fair value method or are we going to use the equity method? Well, in this case, it says they own 5% of the company. So we're going to use the fair value method. So that means that unrealized gains or losses and also dividends are going to affect Berkshire, uh, Berkshire's profit. Okay, so their pre-tax income for Berkshire Hathaway is going to increase by 210000 Now, that's the $10,000 of dividend revenue, which we said there's $10,000 dividend they receive right there. So that's revenue to Berkshire Hathaway. Okay, and then there's a $200,000 unrealized gain. What is that? Well, they bought the stock for 400000 and then at the end of the year, you see now the stock is worth 600000 So the difference between 600000 and 400000 is 200000 so that's an unrealized gain because it went up in value. So basically two hundred plus $10,000, there's $210,000 increase in pre-tax income for Berkshire Hathaway. Now, if you want to see the journal entries, here's what would be the, would be the journal entries for, for Berkshire Hathaway. So when they uh, purchase uh, the stock in Chocolate Ham, you debit the investment account, credit cash. When they uh, get the dividends, they got to debit the cash account, those are cash dividends, and then credit dividend revenue. And then they have to mark the investment to market at December 31st uh, when the investment has increased in value. Okay, so it's increased. Oh, I got a little mistake so there. So that's actually 200000 that is increased in value. All right, let me mark that out. 200000 because it went from 400000 to 600000 So we have a $200,000 increase in the investment, and then we credit unrealized gain for $200,000. Okay. So that's the effect if we were using the fair value method. But let's say 
that we're not using the fair value method. Let's say that Berkshire owned 25% of chocolate ham and is therefore presumed to have significant influence over chocolate ham. Now, we're going to have the same facts as above, but now the accounting is going to be different. Okay, here's, here's basically what's going to happen in terms of Berkshire's profit. The unrealized gain, okay, the fact that the fair value went up to six hundred thousand, we're going to disregard that, okay. That under the equity method, an, an unrealized gain that does not affect Berkshire's uh, profit, okay. We're not going to record any journal entry for that. Now, when Berkshire receives the dividend, we're going to have to make a journal entry because Berkshire's going to get ten thousand dollars cash, but we're not going to record dividend revenue. Actually, we're going to decrease the investment account. So basically, the dividend is not going to be revenue. We're not going to have an unrealized gain. How is Berkshire's profit going to be effective when they own 25% instead of 5% and they use the equity method? They're going to take 25% of Chocolate Ham's net income. So in this case, that'd be 25% uh, of 100,000 is 25,000. Berkshire is going to recognize 25,000 of investment revenue. Okay. So Berkshire's pre tax income will go up by 25,000. See, it's very different. The fair value method, we had 210,000. Uh, it, uh, effect on Berkshire's pre-tax income, and here it's, it's just twenty-five thousand. Okay, now if you want to see the journal entries here, uh, so here let's scroll down. We'll see the journal entries. All right now, when you acquire the investment, that's the same whether it's fair value or equity method. In each case, you're debiting the investment account, crediting cash. But when you receive the dividend on June thirtieth, okay, we're debiting cash like we did before, but you're not crediting dividend revenue. Instead, you're just crediting the investment account. So you're, you're actually reducing the, the asset, the investment on the on the balance sheet. Okay, now December 31st, you're not going to you're not going to mark the asset to, to fair value and have the unrealized gain. However, that proportionate share of the investee's net income, which was 25% uh, of 100,000, 25,000, you're going to record that. You're going to credit investment revenue. Okay, then you're going to debit the investment account. So if you wanted to know what amount this investment would be on Berkshire Hathaway's uh, balance sheet as of December 31st under the equity method, it would be 400000 minus 10000 plus uh, 25000 Okay, so that we, we call that the carrying value of the investment, the amount appear on the balance sheet. And uh, that would be $415,000 under the equity method uh, that this asset would be on the balance sheet for Berkshire Hathaway.